Wise Guy Wednesday now on the morning show today. Matt Sellen has some tips for teachers and showing us how we can bring science into the classroom in a nice, easy way. Right. I've been trying to think of things that we can do that people can do at home. Okay. Stuff that, that's safe and doesn't take much space and doesn't explode too badly and uh, <laughs> cost, doesn't cost a lot of money. So, right. so I, I have a few ideas. I'm teaching a class this semester for elementary education students and we're developing a lot of demonstrations that you can do for a few dollars. And okay. So I thought I would talk about simple machines today because it's pretty cool. So the first thing I want to do is show how a block and tackle or a pulley works. And oh, so good. I could use you guys' help with this. Sure. If you guys could each take one end of this thing here. And so here we have a block and tackle. And you'll notice something that this is true for all simple machines, which is that if I pull on this thing just a little bit, or I pull a lot over here, I get a small motion over here, but I'm lifting something much heavier. So the force that I'm using to pull this thing down with isn't very much at all. Just sort of two fingers, yet I'm lifting sort of eight or nine pounds of water down here. So this is a common feature for all simple machines. You get where you put the effort in, you have a big motion and a small force, and where the action is, where the load is, you have a big force but a smaller motion. So if we put this down, we can show another example of this. Let's get that out of the way. <clears throat> okay, here's where we can use the truck. And that's a ramp, okay? So All right. Suppose your job it is to get a truck from down on the ground up to some place, okay. which is higher, okay? Now, you could do this in a couple of ways. You could just lift the truck right up, which, of course, you could do because this thing doesn't weigh much. But that requires quite a bit of force. The weight of this thing makes this little spring scale go all the way down to the bottom. Right. Okay, so I could lift it up like that. That requires a lot of force. Okay, whoops. This was $1.88 at Walmart, by the way. Okay. And the box was? And the box was probably free because I found it in my basement. Exactly. <laughs> right. That's good because teachers have That's a, right. lot, a big budget, uh, not a very big budget. Exactly. And so we really try to make these things on the cheap. Yeah. And so, so to demonstrate this ramp, what we're going to do is we're going to pull this thing up the ramp and you'll notice now that the little spring scale only reads about a quarter of what it was mm -hmm. right. okay so it's a much smaller force required to pull this thing up the ramp but you're pulling it farther now so this this was about a foot this is a four foot board so you traded that the distance that you have to move for force so you could have a force which is big and you can move it a foot straight up or you could have a force which is about a quarter of what that was required, sure. but you're moving it four times as far. And we can get it, so I mean, certainly some fifth graders can get it, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and, and this is kind of cool. So, and so you can have people examine, you know, you can make different ramps, different angles, and things like that. And I had my students this week. You can actually, if you, if you figure out, if you just measure the distance that you move, mm -hmm. and you look at the little scale here, and you see this number, which is measures force, if you just multiply the distance times the force, you'll find it's always the same. So if you have, and that's a very important concept in physics, it's called the concept of work. Hmm. And so the work that's required to get this thing from down there to up there is always the same, no matter how you do it. Okay? So if you have a very long ramp, you multiply that by a small force. If you have a very small force, or a very short ramp, which would mean the thing was vertical, you need a much bigger force to get the thing to the top. And you'll have more of these experiments that teachers can do in the classroom coming up? Oh yes, we're going to do some really big stuff with hammers and, and uh, levers, and or levers as you say. Okay. Okay. And so that's coming up in the next segment. Sounds good. We'll see, that, see you again at 7.25, and the morning show will continue.